Welcome back to Let's Play Newtopia for the Turbo Graphics 16 bit. Oh, yeah. Let's go on and finish this game. Hopefully, within the next day or maybe two. All right, so yeah, uh, last time on Let's Play New Tope Topes, uh, we finished up level six and wasted a lot of time doing a whole bunch of nothing on the last overworld. And today we're gonna head into level seven and hopefully not waste any more time because we're right next to the dungeon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't really know why, but I'm feeling a little bit more hyper than usual today. I guess that's what coffee can do to you sometimes, because I've been drinking a lot more of it lately. And holy shit, I kind of need to, because if anybody knows my personal schedule, if I'm not having a day off, then generally speaking, my days start as early as 4 a.m. And uh, uh, needless to say, I'm a little bit uh, used to waking up early, perhaps a little bit too used to waking up early. So, oh man, what's up with that enemy? He's a little, he's a little hyper. Not as hyper as me, but uh, he's pretty close to it. <laughs> oh man, level seven and we're still stuck with a bunch of enemies that walk around doing nothing. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, what's up with this? Oh, that that's kind of funky. I didn't see anything like, like that throughout the rest of the game. That's a little bit misleading, but at least we have it. Okay, so it looks like my intuition was correct. I, I thought for a second when I was looking back at my footage of Newtopia 1, and I was looking at part 2, and I was like, okay, so the trap blocks unfortunately don't always follow... The, the rules that were given to us um, introduced in level two. Um, unfortunately, my intuitions were correct. So, level seven introduces what I think is the biggest bunch of pile of bullshit. Um, so, previously, the trap blocks had this color coding to let the player know if it was safe to cross or not. And that's all you needed to look out for. And I was okay with that because it was subtle, yet nuanced enough to be like, okay, I need to keep a second eye out for this. Unfortunately, um, level seven, eight, levels seven and eight break this rule. And now all of a sudden we have to deal with the fact that now even something as uh, subtle as the regular blocks can attack us. What? the actual fuck why who thought that was a good idea that, that that's a, that's like going into a room like this and then being a being too afraid to push a block because oh well what if this has spikes protruding out of it you know and i fucking hate shit like that like maybe if it had a telegraph that'd be okay but Granted, the other trap blocks didn't need that because all you had to look out for was its color. And now that you have this built into the regular blocks and they have traps protruding out of them now? What? Why? Why would you do that? That's so... That's... That, that is... That is artificial NES difficulty bullshit at its finest. I love... I like Newtopia a lot. I'm, I'm still not you know, gonna deny that in any capacity, but man, that is just, that is objectively bullshit. I'm sorry. Like, something like that should not be in the game, guys. Like, not even, not even Nintendo did something like that. Why would you, why would you do that? Why would you do that? That's, that's stupid. That is all kinds of stupid. God. Ugh. So, hopefully we get some directions from this old man. Alright, so it's hidden within the walls of this labyrinth, but there is a problem. So, levels 7 and 8 also introduce uh, something interesting. So, um, 
if you've paid attention to the map in the previous levels, you'll know that, like, if you're taking the bombs uh, and destroying walls, um, the hidden rooms aren't exactly marked on the map, which is why, you know, taking shortcuts isn't all that obvious, and it really rewards the player for thinking out the, outside of the box and trying different things. Now, we actually have to kind of do that to some extent in the later dungeons, which is why I'm kind of glad they started hurling uh, bomb upgrades at us left and right within the previous uh, three overworlds, and uh, we have to definitely use that to our advantage for certain. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we, d we definitely need to uh, pay attention to the map shape, especially once we hit the crystal ball to see if there's any potential walls we need to blow up. And uh, I'm not too unfamiliar with this. I actually don't mind this too much because I remember, I, I, as I've stated before, I've played a lot of Zelda Classic, and puzzles like these aren't like too out of the ordinary. But granted, I probably have a little bit more sense in fighting these things more than the average player. So I guess if you're looking at it from that perspective, that's a little bit funky, I won't lie. But at least you have something in the game that tells you about this. At least it's not like, oh, well, the, all of a sudden the game's going to do this without any warning. Because I know there was level 7 and Zelda 1 did something like that, where um, there was actually, if I'm not mistaken, there was a, uh, an item. There was the red candle, right? And it was in the middle of the dungeon, but it didn't have the room marked. But, like, nothing in the game told you about that, and you never had anything quite breaking the rules and like suggesting you'd have to do something like that so something like that comes out of left field and it really throws the player off so in terms of like you know being prepared for such a situation I i'm going to give utopia the points for doing that over zelda one you better watch out zelda one you're, lo you're losing out to quite a bit of stuff here <laughs> oh man Not liking how these guys can float over water a whole lot because that means I have to kind of hmm. ah I have to definitely be on the lookout for things like that. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to use the wings jets yet because there's a chance that uh hmm. oh god oh god that is not an ideal starting point oh god that's not where i'd start the player outside of the staircase with an enemy right next to me and like they got in the middle of the fire oh well i can just do that too Oh, okay, no, she's right there. Thank God. Ugh. Okay, maybe I should have used those wings. Holy shit. <laughs> I probably... Well... Yeah! Yeah, no, that wouldn't have been a bad idea. The only thing I was worried about is, like, losing my progress in the dungeon. Like, not necessarily from things that I've done, but, like, the fact that the highlighted rooms won't shut up, show up. And that's always something that I've already, like reiterated time and time again that I don't like about Newtopia 1. But, you know, now that I think about it in retrospect, it's not like I was that far off. So, no harm, no foul, I guess. If you want to look at it like that. Hopefully these guys will provide us something. Well, it's a little bit too late for cherry drops, my friend. Okay, yeah, all right. So this is where we need to start going next. I've already checked out the other uh, paths, so... You know what? This wall right here looks like it could potentially lead somewhere. Oh, yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, this looks like... Yeah, this looks about right. This looks about right. Yep. 
I thought so. That's kind of cute, though. I never really brought mention to that, but I like how, like, you have like, these basic slime enemies that want to pretend to be scary, so they're like, oh, I'm gonna put on the sheet, or whatever. I, I can't tell what that is, and I'm gonna be scary and spooky and all that stuff. When the game shines with personality in certain areas, I will be sure to let you guys know, because I love games that love to flaunt its charm whenever it can. Can I even... Okay. Well, not exactly what I was looking for, but I kind of need it regardless. Okay, that is the funkiest way of opening a door I have yet seen in this playthrough. Like, I get pushing one block, but having to push all of them, that's, that's kind of funny. But at the same time, I kind of wish the game would do more of that. I feel, again, like, the game has the potential to do puzzles that, like, bring itself out of the Zelda 1 limitations and try something new. Why can't it do more things like that, you know? Oh, and yeah, now I'm starting to see why the shield hasn't always been working, because it's always, it's more so dependent on whether, like, the projectiles hit, yeah, that's part, yeah, that is so why I was getting mixed up earlier, because, so the shield is pr part of a certain part of my hurt box, rather than the entire side I'm facing, so if it hits my head and not my shield, uh, the projectile, uh, will negate that, and I'll take damage anyway. I, once again, the, the helmet box issues are coming into play here. Ugh. Yeah, that makes so much more sense, actually. I was like, why is this randomly working and uh, not working? It, it kind of mixes me up a little bit, because, like, I'm not for certain if my shield actually works or not sometimes. But now that I've actually tested it out for myself... Well, no, it's working right there! No, no, now it isn't. Okay. Maybe it is that... I don't know. Oh, hey. It's a bit basic, but I'll take it. It's basic. See, like, you didn't see stuff like this in Zelda 1. It's little things. It's, 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 a, it's a very small thing. But considering that Link to the Past hadn't come out yet, and we, we still haven't really, you know, developed the grounds for, like, a proper, deep, like, puzzle-based platformer or action-adventure game yet, uh, something like that would be considered well ahead of its time. It's like, I don't know, that's the kind of mindset I like to, like, take games in. And, and, like, something I kind of learned watching people like the Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Um, he's technically a movie reviewer and not much of a game reviewer. But, like, I remember I was watching his, uh, his Star Wars uh, marathon review. And how he described um, New Hope was really interesting. And it, it definitely changed my perspective on how to view things forever. And he said something along the lines of, if you watch A New Hope with the mindset that it came out in theaters in 1977 and, and you know, something like that, a movie of its caliber didn't really exist at the time, the movie will absolutely blow your mind. And I was like, holy shit, yeah. Because, like, before then you had a lot of, like, spy movies or, like, um, you know, soap operas or, um... What's it? It's on the tip of my tongue. Holy shit. Um, you had, uh, you had Star Trek, which was the only other sci-fi thing I could think of, but even that had its own fair share of limitations. You had, um, a lot of westerns. Westerns were pretty popular at the time. Very popular. Westerns kind of dom dominated the, the U.S. market for a while. And, uh... Yeah, when you put it into that kind of context, it's like, wow, this literally blows my mind. And you can kind of take elements out of Newtopia and, and apply this kind of logic as well, because you have to remember, this was before the Super Nintendo really established, you know, things as a whole. And, like, 
Sega hadn't really set its mark on the landscape yet, so it was still primarily stuck doing, you know, arcade games, which there is nothing really objectively wrong with that, per se. But that was just something that's to be expected of that time period, right? Like, even their first game was an arcade-based, like, brawler. It was, like, Altered Beast or something. And Alex Kidd wasn't too far removed out of, like, what you'd see from, like, a Mario game, for example. So, and you have games either breaking the conventions or taking previous conventions and building a them like Utopia. And, again, by our... Barring in mind that this was before the Super Nintendo came out and it supercharged everything, that it really just puts it to perspective that, like, yeah, Utopia was definitely a game that, like, yeah, it takes a lot of inspiration and cues from Zelda, but it does a lot of these little things that would, um, might seem small and simple at first, but you can see the kind of impact they have later in developing trends for, uh, Zelda games. And they improve upon them in many small yet many skill ways. You know what I'm saying? Like the big keys, uh, the further emphasis on like different block puzzles as a side. Nothing terribly crazy, but a little bit more involved than lol, beat the rooms, the enemies in a room, and push the block. After you're done, you have to play a guessing game. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <clears throat> The rainbow drop is a little bit more involved because, like, you have rooms that are more designed around it as opposed to just, like, either it being a shortcut tool or, like, you, you reuse the same room layout seven or eight times and it's just kind of expected from you, you know? I love me some critiques, damn it. It's, and it's so crazy that I could take something as simple as a movie review and apply it to a video game. <laughs> Alright, so... Okay, we haven't really found the, uh, the shield yet at all, huh? Ah. Go away. God damn it. Hmm. That's unfortunate. I wonder if it's down here. No. Well, I guess we're already over here. Might as well take care of the boss while we're at it. Okay, so what's up with this dude? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. There's a lot going on here. I guess maybe having that shield would have been pretty helpful, huh? Yeah, you gotta really pick your openings here. I don't even think the flame rod will work here. Oh god, and he, he doesn't really leave much room to open himself up. Okay, so yeah, we gotta take our time with this one. Hmm. Very simple, yet... The kind of boss I like, again, because, like, you're having to take into factor, you know, uh, consideration other little things, like his positioning and what have you. Um, a bit too slow for my liking, because he can't really land enough blows in between, like, certain phases, but... Again, this boss looks simple on the surface, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. You know, having the new, the strongest shield would help, but uh, we're gonna mono e mono it, baby. Ah! Oh my God! Huh? Okay. That didn't take as many shots as I thought it would. Huh. It sucks that we're gonna have to backtrack all the way over here. Ugh. I don't really like that at all, but... <laughs> Alright, so... 
Uh, looking back, I did end up missing a uh, life enhancement upgrade in this overworld. And, you know, the funny fucked up thing about this is is that uh, it really isn't that far off from where um, we should have been finding it, actually. Um, hold on just a second. It should be down here, I believe. Hold on. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Give me that firepower. Okay, so it's down here, actually, if I am not mistaken, based off of the guide I looked up. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I intended for this to be kind of semi-blindish somewhat. The boogeyman dearth. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so even the localization could be a little funny sometimes. Hold on just a second. What, what's up with this? Why... Why on earth is the, uh, the, uh, hold on. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well then. I was not really expecting <laughs> the life upgrade to be right here. Usually there are, and... A more defined location but uh <laughs> right then <laughs> god damn it um like it wasn't even that far from the entrance too like no wonder i completely forgot about it oh boy uh, yeah so i'm terribly sorry that i had to consult a walkthrough at the last minute but lo and behold there you are one of the life upgrades that i missed and the water sphere now we're officially done there is no life upgrade in the subterranean sphere so nothing to miss uh, in that location so with that being said uh, i'm gonna meet you back in level seven and uh see if we can't find that shield so see you guys then